Hi everybody, welcome to floss tube number 31. It's been a little bit, so thank you for hanging around and waiting on me. It's been a busy, busy past month. I went to the Attic Summer School in Phoenix, and actually Mesa, I believe it is, but flew into Phoenix, had an amazing time. That was my first trip to the Attic, and my first trip to the Summer School, and I just can't say enough great things about it. It was wonderful to meet all the other stitchers, it was just such a great group and fun to go around, see what everyone was stitching on, have a chance to visit, see some people and meet some people in person that I hadn't had a chance to before. So it was fantastic. The teachers were amazing. The kits that we received, I felt like I'd already had Christmas. So it was a fantastic time. And I highly encourage any of you to join the Addicts newsletter so you'll know when Jean posts and do sign up because it is well worth your time just in the chance to build new friendships, but also to learn so much, especially if you love samplers. So I, I had a, a, just an amazing time. Um, I then came home and my husband and I took a little bit of time and went and visited family. Some of them we haven't seen in a couple of years and it was great just to get away and have a chance to reconnect and visit with them and um, kind of touch base since we've all been kind of hibernating the last few years. It was good to get out and, and do some visiting with family. So it's been a busy month, but it's been a great one. But I am glad to be back with you today talking and, and sharing some things that I've been working on lately. The first thing that I want to do is just say thank you. I have a lot of new subscribers. So thank you guys for subscribing and welcome. Thank you to those of you who are still sticking around you've been with me this whole time I appreciate you and if you know someone that hasn't watched the floss tube or joined the Facebook page please share my info with them I'd love to have them join now I know you're tired of just listening to me talk and want to see what I've been up to so let me show you my first finish and you guys know that I love history and I love samplers. Well, my mom and I, I think the last video I talked about, we went out to dog sit my grand dog. I don't have grandbabies yet, but I have a grand dog. And on the way out there, we pass a Russell Stover outlet. That is my mom's favorite place to stop. Anytime we go to the East Coast and we pass Russell Stover outlet, we have to make a stop. And so we stopped and was looking and bought a couple of, of different types of candy and they have the sampler boxes. I have been on the lookout for one of the metal kind of vintage Whitman sampler tins. Cannot find them anywhere. I finally found one though. But we were talking about, well, I wonder what made them um, start calling them Whitman sampler and why did they choose for the cover or the box to look like it was cross-stitched. And so, of course, you know, I'm curious. I had to Google it and start reading and seeing why did they do that? And I'm gonna share some of that history with you in just a little bit. But I came home and I decided I needed a project bag to make that would kind of have that Whitman's theme to it. And so what I did, I'll show you the back. Um, I do have a funny little story. I have my Whitman's sampler 10 that I would love to show you. And I will show you one day. But I took it with me when I went to summer school and I got so many goodies at summer school that it was time to come home and I didn't have room for it. I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to condense. I packed, I nearly set on my suitcase, still did not have room for some of my stuff. And so my friend Polly um, came to my rescue. She brought the tin, uh, the tin home with her. And so the next time I see Polly, I'll have to pick it up. So she was really sweet to um, cart my tin home for me. So I had room in my suitcase for all my other goodies. So anyway, I just have a picture. It's black and white. So you just kind of have to envision. But the sampler tin that I bought looks like this. So you see it says Whitman's sampler and the sampler looks like it's been stitched. And then all of this, the little border and the little motifs are all um, cross-stitch looking. And so this is what my tin looks like, only it's, it's nice and colorful. And um, I decided 
I think I need a project bag that looks like that. So what I did was just take my tin and chart some of the motifs off of the tin, not to sell, but just for me personally to use. And so instead of saying Whitman's, I tried to find a font that looked as close to the Whitman script that I could. And so I did Jennifer's sampler because you guys know I love samplers. And so I, I thought this would be a great project bag to put um, a, a sampler I'm working on in. Then I found this little motif came straight from the sampler box that I have. And then of course these little guys all came off of it. So this was my Whitman's 10 inspired project bag finish. And it was really super easy. If, if you have a Whitman's 10 or one to chart one, the motifs are very easy to read, they're easy to chart, and it's just a fun, fun little thing to do. Then I had this fabric that reminds me of the colors that are in the Whitman's 10 and has all the buttons. And that would be a fun use for the Whitman's 10. Just use it to hold lots of fun little buttons. So that's my finish. Then of course I had to make a little ore container. I don't know if you guys have ever made these. They are adorable. It's just flat, so it's easy to pack. And then when you get where you're going, you can just snap the edges. And when you get through, you now have just this cute little, or, whoop, dropped it little orc container that you could put your, your threads in as you're stitching. So these are great if you're traveling or going to a stitching retreat somewhere, just a little something to put your, your threads in. And then when you finish and you're ready to pack to come home and you don't have a good friend, Polly, like I do, that will pack some of your stuff for you, <laughs> you can unsnap it and that will fit just about anywhere. I think I could have even gotten this back in my suitcase. Then let me share why, what I found out about the Whitman samplers. It was started in 1912 and during World War II, um, the Whitman's company would ship boxes of chocolates to the soldiers overseas. And sometimes the women that were on the production line would write little handwritten notes just to tuck into the boxes. And it was something that, I mean, chocolate makes us all feel better, I think. But when the soldiers opened up those boxes and also not did they have the great chocolate, but they had a little handwritten note wishing them well, letting them know somebody was thinking about them and thanking them for their service. That just brought an extra smile to their faces. And so um, that was just something sweet that I think a lot of people probably don't know about. I didn't realize that until I started researching it. And it said that over six million pounds of chocolate was sent overseas during World War II to servicemen and women. And I just thought, well, that speaks a lot for Whitman's that they would go to this issue to do that. And it also said after 9-11, when we went to war again, they once again started sending chocolate to the, the servicemen and women along with little notes that they would tuck into the boxes. So I thought that was just a really a fun fact and something that I wasn't aware of until I read about it. Um, something else that was kind of different about the Whitman's candy was that when you opened up the box in the lid, there was a little index that would let you know if you looked down at the little chocolates that were laying in the tray, you knew what chocolate was what. You didn't have to take a bite and say, oh, I don't like that. I, I want something different. And you have a half eaten piece of candy. You could just look at the little index and you'd know what kind of candy you were getting before you ever bit into it. Although I will tell you a story about my mom's aunt, my great aunt. My mom said she loved chocolate, but she had problems because when she would get a box of chocolates, everybody else, she had boys and, and people in the house and they would eat her chocolate. So what she did, mom said, she remembered this as a little girl. She would take a bite out of every piece of chocolate in her box of candy. So nobody would touch it because nobody wanted a piece of chocolate that someone else had already bit off of. And so I, I think of that every time I see a box of chocolate about her taking a little nibble to keep everybody else from eating her chocolate. Um, another interesting fact about the Whitman's candy, it was the first 
candy in the United States to wrap their candy box in cellophane. And it became the largest single user of cellophane in America. That's just kind of a little trivia fact, but you guys may play um, Trivial Pursuit and this may be a question and now you'll know. Then this was the part that I was really interested in. I'm like, why did they decide to use cross stitch um, looking designs for their box? And it said that Walter Sharp was the president in the early 1900s. And he was trying to think what would be a great way to package this that would catch people's eye. And in his home, they had a sampler, a cross stitch sampler hanging up in the hallway. And it said that that was his inspiration. He thought that was a great looking sampler and it always caught his eye. And so he's like, why don't we just use a cross stitch theme um, box for our design? And that's what they did. And it still is kind of present even to today. And it said that in a way it had a double meaning because Whitman sampler. A sampler could mean that you had a sampling of candy. They, The candy that they put in the Whitman sampler boxes was supposedly a sampling of their best loved candy that they, they sold. And so this way you got kind of a little assortment. So a sampler could be just that it was a sampling of their favorite candies, but also it, it was a nod to the actual cross stitch sampler that hung in Mr. Sharp's home. So anyway, that kind of satisfied my curiosity. I don't know if you guys were ever curious about that as well, but if you were, hopefully this answered your, your curiosity level today. Um, the next thing I want to share with you, I have been busy as a bee trying to get my website up and ready to go. I had announced that it would be open mid-September and here it is. It's mid-September. I have um, just a few final touches to make to the website. I have someone that's helping me and um, my hope is that it will be open this week. So as soon as it's actually open, I will make an announcement on here. I'll make an announcement on my Facebook page and also on my Instagram page. So you guys will know when it is up and running and I can't wait. I have 10 samplers that are ready to go and that's what the page will start with. And then I have a whole basket or drawer rather full of antique samplers that I have some of them charted. I still have some that I need to chart and will be getting those ready to post as I get them completed. I am working hard on my Bristol. Um, it is out of the frame. That was a very nerve wracking experience. My husband helped me and I kept saying, don't do it if you think it's gonna mess it up, just be careful. And he's very cautious and he did a great job but we got the frame off of the Bristol and I have begun the charting process on it. So I'm hoping, I go to Shepherd's Bush in a couple of weeks and I'm hoping to have it completely charted to where I can start stitching on it while I'm out there. So I'm excited. And speaking of Shepherd's Bush, if any of you guys are going, be sure and look me up. I'd love to say hi in person and um, get a chance to visit just a little bit while we're out there. I'm hoping for cooler temps and just a fun time. I, I've always enjoyed when I've gone out to Utah and um, enjoyed the last Shepherd's Bush retreat that I attended. And so I'm looking forward to it. It'd be a fun, a fun retreat, I'm sure. Now I'm going to show you what progress I've made on, this is the 10th sampler that I'll have posted on the website when I get it up and going this week. And so I'm frantically finishing it. It should be completed by the end of this evening. I'm gonna stay up till it's done tonight. But this is the original sampler and it's just called C Divine. And the thing that caught my attention on this sampler was the border. That's the first thing that I just fell in love with. It has this beautiful floral border all the way around. And I just thought those flowers were so pretty. And I love the combination of kind of the orange and the red. I told someone the other day, it made me think of sweet and sour. So um, the border is definitely what caught my attention. But another thing that I have enjoyed, at the bottom, it has a lot of Algerian eyelet stitching. 
and I love to do Algerian eyelets. To me, I'm not even sure why, I just think they're very relaxing, so I love stitching them, and it's just so nice when I complete one to see that nice, neat um, little hole in the middle and try and make them all look the same. I don't know why, but I, I love to stitch those, so this has been a fun sampler just for that reason alone. Now, I'll show you the reproduction that I've been working on. And I'm very close, like I said. I'm gonna stay up tonight until this is finished. I have one more row of the green lettering, and then I have the name and year to do at the bottom, and then I am finished. But this has been a very fun project to work on. And I think part of the fun of this is that there are so many different borders. And so I would stitch a border and it would be complete. And then I'd get to do something different for the next row. And so it's just made this an interesting, fun piece to work on. I've stitched this on 40 count chai. And it's hard, I know, on the video to see, but it has just a little bit of a green tone. And I absolutely love it. I never thought about using this color fabric with it. And my friend Polly and Ray were the ones that actually suggested. We teased Polly and told her she's the color consultant. Um, and I couldn't be happier. I've, I've loved stitching on this chai and I'm gonna have to get more because I think I, I see some more in my future with this color. But this is a fun sampler. And like I said, it's getting very close. So you guys wish me well the rest of today getting that, that one finished. Um, I just have some giveaways to share with you that um, from last video, and I'm gonna announce the winners for those. The first was a little bowl, and I told you the story last video about this little bowl I got from Wegmans. And that winner is Janet DeBryan, so congratulations, Janet. The next um, giveaway is this little Cecilia's bag, and that's Joe Marie Hogel. So congratulations, that's your little treat. Then I have this hand towel that says, you are my sunshine, and it looks like cross stitch kind of across the bottom. And this goes to Linda Peoples, so congratulations, Linda. I then had some little finishing, fall finishing pieces, and those go to Kathy Birch, so congratulations, Kathy. And then I had two cross-stitch kits I picked up when I went out to Virginia. The first one was the Monticello Pin Pillow, and that one goes to Eva Islami. So Eva, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name. You're the winner of that little kit. And then the last one was this Maria Monroe sampler adaptation. And the winner of that one is Norette Herzog. So congratulations, Norette. If you were a winner today, if you will send me your um, mailing address in an email, and I'll have my email linked below, I'll get these goodies out to you this week. Um, I think that's basically all I have for today. I'm keeping it short and sweet. I hope the next time I come to you this week is to announce the website opening and um, let you guys see what samplers, reproduction samplers that I'll have available then. I do have one more announcement that I want to make. And if you follow along on the Facebook page, you're already aware of this, but next Saturday, the 24th, I will be announcing the registration details and the Zoom retreat details um, that I'm gonna be hosting in February of 23. I'm looking forward to it. It's a fun theme, a fun finish and lots of things that we'll be doing to make it take it so I think you'll enjoy and we'll just have a good time. So be watching Saturday the 24th is when I will post the registration information and I'd love to see as many of you as possible join us for the Zoom. We'll have a great time, that's for sure. So take care, keep stitching, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye.